Okay, guys, today we are going to continue with our second part of the lesson on the League of Nations. Last lesson, we just to give you a wrap up of what we have been talking about so far. In the past few lessons, we have been focusing on understanding the League of Nations, the aims of the League of Nations. And then for the next subsequent, for this, uh, the, sec the lesson before this, what we have done so far was to look at the um, so called the weaknesses of the LOM. And we have actually seen, we actually has already an understanding of the uh, weaknesses because the weaknesses have a lot to do with their ambition, what they actually aim to do and the things that they were uh, hoping to achieve uh, as a result of a so-called a peacekeeping organization for the world after the First World War. Now, the problem is that the League of Nations has a lot of um, very diverse views. There are some people who feel that it is a good initiative. Things are, things are actually doing very, very well. Uh, they can do a good job. But there, on the other hand, there are also some, some of them who actually see that the League of Nations is actually not doing its job because there are a lot of uh, implications. So there are people who have given it a chance and hope that it will work. There are people who doesn't. Um, actually, it, it draws a lot of parallels. Okay, I'm just going to sidetrack this a little bit. It draws a lot of parallel with how we are seeing what our government is doing. Okay, I think all of us have our different perspective. If you have been keeping um, in perspective what are happening, what is it that happening in Singapore with regard to the COVID-19, you'll realize that our Singapore government, even after implementing certain measures, our numbers of um, so-called infection have actually continued to rise. And a lot of people are very, very frustrated. That means that they say that, oh, government is not doing their job. Government is not effective. Why are we extending this um, circuit breaker into a continuous circuit breaker all the way to June? Now, if you were to look at that context, obviously things are not going to... Uh, it does definitely show that Singapore is not doing a good job. As a government, we're not doing a good job. But however, if you look at the things that they are doing in terms of looking after the well-being of the... Uh, foreign workers in the dorm, or they are focusing on the situation that's happening in uh, the dorm itself by doing very proactive testing, then in some way, the government is trying their best to isolate uh, new cases, unlinked cases, community, community spread, in order to ensure that Singapore um, general population is actually safe. So in that way, there is always two sides of the coin, positive and negative. And as a historian, whether you're looking at current affairs or whether you're looking at history events, it is, it is important for us to be able to see things from both perspectives and able to look at facts. And I think that is a very important discipline that the humanities student do have. And as a historian, these are something that I think is very important for you. Okay, so it's just a slight digression. Now, I'm going to move on to today's lesson. And what we're going to look at is, we are going to focus on the lesson with regards to the, uh, okay, okay. We're going to look at the lesson that we have on this. Okay, during the previous lesson, we have talked about the League of Nations. There are four reasons of the League of Nations having certain difficulties in trying to do its job. And there are four big weaknesses. Today, I'm going to use the sources which I ask all of you to go back and read and understand the sources. I will be going through a verbal discussion. I'm not going to get some of you to answer them because what I wanted to do was actually to use the sources as more of a springboard for you to understand the four different weaknesses of the LON that is specified also in your textbook and your notes. Okay, so the first thing that we have actually looked at was that the League of Nations was an organization that was actually not very credible. It's not very authoritative. People do not uh, respect the LON because they were ineffective in actually working and dealing with some of the issues that was happening in the world. Now, in the, sub in the next lesson that you will see uh, the following week, okay, on Monday, what you will get to do is that you will get to see some of the examples and that will help to reinforce this reason. Okay, so the next lesson, you will get to see some examples of some of the things that was being done by the LON. And these examples are clear illustration of this thing about the lack of authority or lack of credibility. 
Okay, so as I mentioned to you, the League of Nations tried to adopt certain uh, peacekeeping measures. However, it didn't really work. Okay, and one of the things that we've been talking about was we discussed in depth on this cartoon, and this cartoon actually shows you another reason of the LOM failure. And the LOM failure was this idea of membership. Now, during the last session, I stopped here. We mentioned about that there were many key powers that were not members. In fact, it's not just about uh, key powers. Many of the other countries were also not involved. The reason why they were not involved was that this was actually more of a European organization. Okay? It only allowed the Europeans to, uh, to be involved and they don't actually provide the opportunity for leaders um, to, to actually come in and join that. And, not, and many of them didn't join because the world was still a situation of, um, expen of European expansion and colonialism. Countries like, for example, Singapore, Malaya, was not uh, involved. The reason was actually very, very simple. The reason was because they are all colony. So one representative, which is their colonial master, Britain, is, got, is good enough. Okay. Now, the key biggest problem that the membership issue have is that many leaders do not, many big countries were not involved. Okay. And you are going to learn a little bit more in the next lesson. Okay. So, um, let me just recap this a little bit. Huh? Now, this is the situation of the world. And you will notice that right in the center of this picture is this man who is an illustration or the representative or what we call a depiction of um, United Nations. He is, this picture, this figure that you see over here is Uncle Sam. This is Uncle Sam. Okay, Uncle Sam is the picture, is this thing that I'm going to share with you now. Okay, so this person here that you see, okay, is Uncle Sam. And what you see is that all the different countries like England, okay, the foreign nation, okay, the European nation, okay, and of course, uh, okay, countries like Japan, all of them are pooling. And you notice that this picture, ha you see that the League of Nations is tying up the hands of the American which is a clear indication that this cartoon is actually not a very pro-LON. And the, con the perspective that we're looking at is actually the perspective of the American. The American do not believe that it is a good idea to join the LON because once they do so, their hands will be tight. And they will be tight and pulled by all corners of the picture because all these countries are going to pull them and going to and going to tie and bound America up. So, which is also the reason why the Americans at that point of time decided that they are going to adopt this thing called the, okay, this thing called the policy of isolationism. And what is the policy of isolationism? Meaning that they decided that they are going to stay away. They are going to keep themselves away from all the things that's happening. And what they wanted to do is that they wanted to focus on the industry. They don't want to get themselves involved in European matters because to them, whatever that happens in the World War has nothing to do with them. Whatever happened in Europe has nothing to do with them. Okay, so this uh, adoption of a policy of isolationism was a very critical thing because this US was the country who proposed it. And that's the irony of it. It's like all of you. Your class decided that after COVID-19, for example, Lionel decided that they're going to organize a barbecue. And he started organizing, getting the whole class to prepare. And then everybody was bringing food and everything. And then at the end of it, Lionel didn't come at all. So that, that was like the type of situation. Yeah, I know. That sounds like something that you'll do, Lionel. Okay, but you get what I'm trying to say. So membership itself plays a very, very important role. US being the one who initiated it, being the one who actually wanted it, didn't join at the end. And therefore, if they have joined, they would have, it will have a little bit more buy-in. The league will have greater credibility, greater reputation, and of course, with the US strength after the First World War, they would be able to enforce whatever that they want to do on a more uh, so-called more eager or more enthusiastic basis. So you understand, huh? so who is now running the show? The one who actually didn't want to have the, this organization or Britain and France now being the biggest power have to run the show. It is the same thing. Back to the example of that 
um, the barbecue example. It is like Lino initiated it, Lino was not there, and then somebody else has to take the, the lead. For example, uh, Liu Chen has to take the lead, or even Kai Tong has to take the lead. Obviously, they are going to do it very reluctantly because that's not what they want. So get the idea so far about the membership issue. Okay, the next thing is of course Russia. There are two other countries that was not involved. Russia was now the odd one out. They were the only country that was a communist country and therefore they were not invited to join because everybody was very worried about Lenin. They don't like Lenin. They find Lenin very suspicious and Russia was trying to spread communism to other parts of the world and therefore they see them as a bad influence. They don't want them. And remember, uh, Russia is one of the biggest country in the world and yet Russia is not invited to join. Germany was also not invited to join. They were super they were a superpower before World War One. But the fact that they were not invited to join because it was a defeated nation also means that the league itself is being compromised in terms of credibility. Okay? Guys, I know that I already sent you all this note. Do listen to the uh, explanation that I gave you, add on to your answer. Or when the video is sent to all of you, you can actually jot down the key notes as we go along. Okay, now let me move on. Huh? Now, this is a very interesting scenario about what the League of Nations, another weakness of the League of Nations. So obviously, what is happening over here? This is a picture of the League of Nations in session. And what do you see happening? There is this man standing outside of the League of Nations session. Who do you think this man will represent? I think all of you should have an idea based on what we have learned just now. This picture is again, this picture in terms of the way that is dressed a European country or a Western country, this man actually is a representation of the big, uh, of so-called the bystanders. You may call them as, it could be the American, could be, it could also be a representation of all the countries that were not involved. And what is happening here? What is happening here? This man is obviously smoking, okay? He's smoking outside. And then there is also smoke coming from within, from out, from inside the room out. So what does this whole thing mean? If you are having smoke, you're throwing smoke, okay? And what is happening inside the League of Nations is that it is also signifying that the League of Nations is actually not doing anything concrete. It's not doing anything concrete. If you look at this very carefully, uh, so this smoke, smoke here represents certain very interesting thing. Smoke here represents that, okay, let me change it to a different color. Okay, this smoke here represents something very interesting because the idea of smoke, okay, the idea of smoke means that there are actually a lot of, uh, where we keep being, telling people that, oh, there's a lot of smoke coming. That means, oh, we try to smoke you. That means that there was a lot of talking. There is a lot of talking. There is a lot of conversation. But smoking also means that, also have a negative connotation, is that there is only talking and there is no concrete action. Okay? So, it gives you an idea, okay? It gives you the idea that the League of Nations are actually not doing anything tough. What they are actually just trying to do was actually to discuss matters. And that was the problem that the LOM was giving. It was only interested in discussing problems, but they were unable. There was a lot of talking, but there was no concrete action that was going on. Okay? So, what were the concrete actions that the world expected the League of Nations to do? Okay. Now, this is a very, very interesting picture. This is on the Chicago Book Tribune. That means that it's actually an American cartoon. It's an American cartoon. And this, sorry, this cartoon itself, okay, this cartoon itself, okay, because it's published on the, there's something very interesting. The caption here says rear view. Rear view means that we must be focusing on what was happening on the back of the picture. That means we see what was happening in the back. Now, this, sorry, this man here, over here, okay, this man over here, is the orchestra okay this man over here is the orchestra and obviously he's a representation of the one that is 
leading the League of Nations or the one that is orchestrating something that's happening. And what is he orchestrating? He's trying to get all these big countries to sing a very interesting tune. And that tune is Everlasting Peace, which is actually what we call the, um, the, the terms or the aims of the LOM. Okay? The terms of the LOM, the terms of the LOM. So everybody is supposed to be singing. But what is happening? When they were facing the League of Nations, everybody is singing. But there is only one person who is actually wholeheartedly and actually believe and not doing anything scheming. The person was actually America. Because only America doesn't have anything on their back. You look at the other few fellas, the English, the French, the Japanese, and also the Italian. They all have something at their back. And that something is a pistol. It represents armament. It represents violence. It represents uh, the use of force. So what is it? So all these countries actually have ambition. Japan want to control the Pacific. The English are not willing to give up on their British fleet, which is their naval fleet. The French wanted to continue to work with the Americans to have some form of alliance okay, to establish their condition. And of course, Italy wanted to create a bigger Italy state because after the Second World War, after, sorry, after the First World War, Italy started to fall into the hands of a fascist government. In the, that means that it's a military government and they actually wanted more things. So what does this cartoon actually share with you? It actually shares with you that this idea of what we call the rear view is that not everybody is singing the same tone. So that means that the League of Nations wanted everlasting peace, wanted to get everybody to do everlasting peace. It didn't happen because these members are not willing to do that. Some of you may be wondering, but Mr. Ng, you mentioned in the previous cartoon and you mentioned in the text and in the notes itself that American is not involved. Why is it that American is still standing here and singing? Because when we talk about this whole idea about disarmament, even though America is not in the League of Nations, the aim of the League of Nations, which is to do disarmament, the uh, US is still participating in that. Okay? Still participating in that. Okay, so. Another picture now, okay, before we talk about the details of the content. Now, this cartoon has a, what we call a, this cartoon actually has a word that's set off, caption. And what is the caption that we are looking at? The caption is this, okay? You have this, say, the caption is moral suasion, okay? The rabbit says that my offensive equipment being practically new, so I will fascinate him with the eyes, with the power of my eye. So what does this tell you? Okay, now look at this picture over here. The rabbit represents the LF. Okay, rabbit represents the LF. The snake represents international strife. That means international conflict. Now, if you look at this picture very, very carefully, who has a better fighting chance? The snake or the rabbit? Okay, I think the answer is pretty straightforward. It is the snake. The snake will have a better opportunity because they are more aggressive and of course, they are stronger. And they say that the only way that the rabbit can convince the snake to back off is that they will now fascinate him with the power of my eye. So that really tells you exactly what the powers of the LON have. It doesn't have a military power. It is soft. It is weak. And the only thing they can do that was to try to fascinate and to do this thing called moral situation. That means to appeal to the people that whatever that they are doing is wrong. So, if you have conflict going on, if you want to persuade somebody that his action is wrong, okay, it's not saying it's impossible, it can be done, but in order to do that, you must have credibility. Because if you don't have credibility, you can try to persuade for all that you want, 
at the end of it, the countries are still not going to listen to you. And if they realize that you cannot carry out your threat, like the rabbit, after telling him off, telling the snake off, he cannot carry on any forms of threat. He is usually, he, in this case, he is actually as good as a paper tiger, meaning he is only good on show. He is not capable in solving any problem. Okay, so the cartoon actually what I'm showing you is to illustrate this situation. One, the post-war attitude. Okay, so you look at the big countries. Most of the countries are not willing to adopt what we call a, uh, a, a military approach. The post-war attitude of major power was that many of them were unwilling to join. Okay, remember, America was not in the picture and everybody was just trying to talk things out. They were only willing to discuss using moral suasion. They want to adopt what we call a pacifist approach. A pacifist approach implies that they are only interested in using peaceful ways. Pacifist means using peaceful ways. They are not willing to use force. They don't want to compromise their, their relationship or uh, they don't want to compromise their economic standing by using political or economic sanction. Sanction means some form of ban, some form of criticism. They don't want to do that either. And because of that, the League of Nations were unable to do what they are supposed to do. Okay? Now, the next thing. Remember just now about that rabbit that I shared with you? The other problems that the League of Nations have was that they cannot resolve conflict. When a war is happening, when international strife is happening, the League of Nations can only use moral solution. It can only try to use some form of um, criticism if they want to, to criticize and tell the people to do the right thing. But because it doesn't have a, any army, it cannot, even if it applies sanction, okay, the many countries were not willing to cooperate. And why is it that the League refused to give any army? Because Britain and France, which is supposedly the biggest country now in the LOM, are also unwilling to contribute any form of military because they themselves were suffering after the First World War. They also wanted to rebuild their economy. They are not interested in getting themselves involved in an idea that doesn't belong to them. So can you see that there is actually a lot of interconnection between the various factors now? The difficulty in resolving dispute was because they were actually having very little credibility. They cannot resolve a uh, dispute was because they do not have strong membership. So all these factors are actually interconnected in its own way. Okay? Now, the next thing that I'm going to focus on, okay, is the, the idea of mandate. Okay, now you notice that here, you notice that there is a blue label, right? That's a blue label. This is a blue label. It's difficult in solving dispute. Now, the second one is that what other difficulties do they have? Now, one of the difficulties that they have was that the German colony was taken away after the Paris Peace Conference. After the Paris Peace Conference in the Treaty of Versailles, all these colonies that belonged to the Germans were taken away to prevent Germany from becoming strong. And they were placed under what we call the mandates of the LOM. That means the LOM will now have to take on the additional responsibility of looking after these German colonies and make sure they get self-government. But the self-interest of the big countries started to play a bigger role. Some of the big countries were eyeing on this colony and they took possession of them without giving back to uh, this country for their own self-government. So, for example, um, in China, um, Germany have a stretch of land known as the known as Shantung. Shantung is actually part of German control of China. But after the First World War, after the Treaty of Versailles, that stretch of land, Shantung, was actually not returned to China. In fact, it was placed under the custody of the Japanese. So, obviously, the Chinese were very upset with this because it is not giving them the self-government or giving it back to where it originally belongs to. So, therefore, there was a lot of frustration. It reduced the credibility of the LOM. Okay. 
Now, another problem, why is it that they cannot solve? Again, this is a sub-point of the difficulty to resolve dispute. Okay, the sub-point is there is a structural weaknesses. Okay, I'm going to highlight some of the structural weaknesses and I'm going to explain it. Of course, you can read it, the details in the textbook, but I'm going to point to you some of the key things. First thing first. Now, the League of Nations consists of um, big bodies. Okay, the one that is highlighted in blue, these are all the big organizations. Under the assembly, the assembly is like your parliament, where every country actually has one vote. Under the assembly, okay, there are different sub Okay, it's like if this is your class comp, or sorry, this is your class, okay, these are what we call your different subcommittee. Okay, different subcommittee. Like some of you may be uh, helping out in maybe, uh, let's say you have certain work or you're in charge of the notice board. A whole group of you are in charge of notice board. Another group is preparing welfare, so on and so forth. So there are other bodies and the countries are actually placed, okay, the countries are actually um, also in this assembly and there are also other bodies that are actually placed over here. So there is actually all these bodies, like for example, economic, finance, technical, or even um, for refugees. Now, they also have a permanent secretariat, which is actually the so-called the admin unit. They take note of all the uh, agreement, all the uh, treaties, and also the information about uh, uh, all the paperwork that is being done, decision that's being made, law that's being made. And this is actually the council. Now, I want you to share with you this very important thing. So, the permanent council of the League of Nations, okay, US is actually not involved. Why is it that there's a bracket over here? Is that it's acting some form of an advisor, but pretty much they were supposed to be in, but they were not, they actually at the end of it, they were not involved at all. So, who are the big countries? So, you have France, Great Britain, Italy and Japan. The council is so-called the bigger power in the organization. So if you look at this very, very carefully, these are all the allies. And there are also non-permanent members that are taken from the assembly. So they will choose some of them and they will place them over here. So they are the ones who make certain decisions about, for example, what to do with the uh, various uh, colony. And they are supposed to be, because they are the biggest country, they must take charge of disarmament. So again, let's focus on some of the pro key problems. Key problem number one, one nation, one vote. That means in order for a law to be passed, in order for a law to be passed, in order for a law to be passed, what is very important is that every country must vote. But there is a very difficult situation. It is not majority win. Okay, that's the problem, the LOM. You must get unanimous vote. Meaning, everybody must agree or everybody must disagree. So, think about it. Is it possible to get unanimous decision? Even in a classroom context like 3E4, not everybody agree. And that's why we use democracy, um, majority win. But in this case, you need to get unanimous vote. Therefore, a lot of decision cannot go ahead. Second, whatever decision that they want, for example, they want to disarm. Let's say they finally find a decision to disarm. Who is the one who has to take the responsibility? It is the council. Because disarmament falls under the council. And what the, disarm what the council will do is that they will create the disarmament commission in order to decide what is the, what are they supposed to do to disarm. And these countries, if you remember the cartoon that I showed you just now, they were all interested in protecting themselves and protecting their power. So the disarmament conference is not going to work for them. The disarmament commission is not going to work. So you can see that there is a lot of problem. Whatever that is decided here is already very, very difficult. By the time it's being executed by the council, it's going to be even more difficult because these people only work for their self-interest, sadly, at that point of time. So this is what I refer to as the structural weakness that prevented them okay, 
that prevented them to do what they were supposed to do to make sure that decision, that, that um, action can be taken. So this is a sub point together with the previous slide, a sub point of the difficulty in resolving dispute. Okay, so other than the army, you have the problems with the mandate, you also have problems with the structural weaknesses. Okay, now, so with that, we conclude the four key factors. Okay, the four key factors, talking about the lack of credibility, okay, the lack of credibility, um, which we mentioned about the, um, the people's uh, belief and the number, the lack of credibility is also influenced by what we call the limited membership. So League of Nations is already not a very well accepted organization because of where it comes from, okay, where it comes from, which is after the Paris Peace Conference. And the whole uh, idea that it is a victor club or it is only for the big country and the limited membership only adds on to the lack of credibility and authority. Next thing, the membership also created a lack of, uh, uh, also created another set of problems because the attitude towards the league was actually very lackluster. Because they do not want to, like the Americans do not want to be involved in the war, uh, in the League of Nations, the attitude towards the league was actually very, very mild. They were very lukewarm. They were not interested. They just was interested in managing their own situation. And because they were not interested in doing what they are supposed to do, that resulted to them having an impact on the difficulty for them to resolve the situation. Okay? The limited membership affected the, um, the presence of a military force. The limited membership also makes it very difficult for them to make decisions. The post-war attitude also make it very difficult to make decisions to use violence or to use any form of method to try to resolve conflict. So why is it that I wanted to show you this last slide where we have already talked about all the four factors? You will realize that these four factors are actually interlinked in one way or another. Your limited membership resulted to the lack of credibility and authority. Your lack of credibility and authority also resulted to them unable to resolve the conflict. Your post-war attitude actually has an impact on the lack of authority. Okay? The limited membership also affected the post-war attitude. So all these factors, do you realize that they are actually interlinked? So all these four factors are actually just a structure for us to put all the different things together so that it's easy for you to understand. But one thing you will notice is that when you are explaining any of these factors, you will realize that you can actually use some of the detail from any one of them to supplement your limited membership or vice versa. Okay, so that is a good interesting thing about this particular weaknesses. All the four factors are actually interlinked and the content can actually come together. Okay, so with this, we come to the end of this part on the weakness of the LON. And before I remove the share screen, I just want to share with you that in the next session, I will not be meeting you online for the class. What will happen is that I will be showing you and I will be giving you certain exam certain um, successes and failure. It will be a self-directed lesson. There will be again a video for you to look at and I will also be showing you certain uh, websites which will clearly illustrate some of the success and the failures of the LON. And what I want you to do is to use those examples okay, in the lesson. Uh, it will be instructed into your SLS. I want you to use all those examples and try to see which does, how does the example relate to the weakness? Is this event the result of people's attitude towards uh, the LOS? Is the result of this event because of the limited membership? Is the result of this event the difficulty for them to resolve conflict because of the lack of a military force? Okay, so I want you to think about all those successes and failure which one does it contribute to? 
Okay, and why is it that it was successful in certain way, but why is it that it failed in other way? So that will be what you will, have, you will see in your next lesson. Okay, so with that, uh, we've come to the end. Okay, we've come to the end of our lesson. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, okay, what I'm going to do now, Okay, all of you should see me already. So what I'm going to do now is that, okay, I'm going, the time now is 11.13. Okay, I don't want to hold, I don't want to have a long full session because the last time we actually have a long session and I don't want to make things uh, too difficult for you all to understand. So I'm keeping this session very, very short. Okay, what I want you to do is very simple. Go back and look at your textbook information. And then when the video is up, Okay, or if you have been jotting down the notes when the video is up, I want you to use the video and then I want you to complete that worksheet that is given to you. Okay, the worksheet at the end of it, there were certain things, what you have learned, what, have, what are the things that you have not, that you want to pay attention to, I want you to jot them down and then use that for your, for your revision. Okay, now um, I've come to the end of the lesson. Okay, I'm going to be online for the, for the next 10 minutes or so. If you have any queries, you can stay back. Um, still in the is a Zoom chat and we can have a face-to-face -face discussion. Oh, sorry, a, a virtual face-to-face -face discussion. If you do not have any issue and you're okay with what is going on, then you can exit the group and I will see you again in the next few lessons. Okay? So if you have no other questions, you can exit the group now. Okay, I'll see you around again before.